Hi, my name is Dr. Katie Sweetser at San Diego State University, and I'm gonna walk you through how to put together an IRB package for a protocol. So when you want to work with human subjects in order to collect data from them, you of course have to get approval from the IRB. Uh, so as you do this, um, you've already gone through your IRB city training and you are an ethical researcher um, and you have thought through uh, not only what questions you have that you need answered through your research, but also the theory that is driving your research and um, the ways in which you want to measure it such that you actually have a method in mind and you've already hold together the skeleton of what your um, research is going to look like. And so what I want to walk you through is how to not go and um, upload the protocol into uh, the online form um, for the IRB, but how you can just assemble these pieces together and what you need in order to um, put together an IRB protocol. Um, so there are several um, things that regardless of what type of research you're doing, an experiment or a survey or a focus group or an interview, um, there are several things that regardless of the type of method that you're, you're undertaking, um, you have to have for your IRB um, protocol submission. So let's go ahead and walk through some of these and then we'll deviate as we get to um, different junctures for different types of methodologies. So the first thing that you need to have done is your IRB city training. Check. You're an ethical practitioner. Um, the next thing that you need to really um, start to think about is how you're going to recruit your subjects, right? So are you going to post a note on Facebook? Are you going to send an email to somebody to ask them to participate? Are you going to post it on Sona? Um, how is it that you're going to let people know that your study is a thing and that you want them to participate or respond to it? Um, so you have to think through of your recruitment and your contact because this is the very first communication that you have with your potential subjects and your potential subjects have not yet gotten to the point where they have um, been administered informed consent. So you really want to make sure that you understand what it is that you're telling them, that you tell them enough to get them interested in it, but not so much that you are going to change the results of your study like a Hawthorne effect type of a deal. So um, you have to, for the IRB, the very first thing you have to do is you have to think through your recruitment and you have to have a recruitment script. If you're just using Sona um, for your research pool, then you don't have to have a recruitment script because you're just posting it on Sona and they're familiar with that. But if you're sending an email to anybody or posting it on Facebook or um, talking in a class or any of those types of methodologies, um, you have to literally write out what it is you're going to say or what it is you're going to post in order to get people interested and informed in your study. The next thing that you have to have is a consent form. So every research um, subject has to go through informed consent. And in many cases, the research subject, because of the types of research we do, um, is not, does not necessarily need to sign a piece of paper, but the research subject has to be walked through um, what the benefits of the study are, what the risks to the study are, what the study entails, um, and uh, how long it's going to take, right? As well as the level of privacy that's afforded to the subject. So um, the IRB will typically have a um, specific consent form that they want you to follow. And I want you to treat the current IRB form for consent almost like a legal document and a Mad Libs where you're only changing out the words that change um, due to your study. And so if it says experiment, but you're doing a, a survey, then you change the word experiment to a survey. If it says anonymous, but you're doing confidential levels of privacy, then you change anonymous to confidential. So I really want you to go through and um, change as little of the wording as possible to still make it truthful and accurate, but um, to keep it in the uh, truest spirit of what the IRB had for its consent form. So that's your consent form. So first we have the recruitment script and then we have the consent form. Um, next, we get to a little bit of a deviation. 
Um, if you're going to do an experiment, then you have to show the IRB your experimental stimuli. So if you're going to show that somebody um, three different videos, you actually have to provide all of the videos for the IRB to review. Um, if you're going to show them three different versions of, say, a press release or a blog post or some other content, then you have to show them the versions of the content that it is that you are going to be exposing people to. I find that when I'm um, working experimental stimuli through the IRB, it's most helpful if you're extremely clear about what your independent variable is, what it is that you're going to be manipulating, and that you make it as easy as possible to see what is the same in every stimulus and then what is that independent variable manipulation in there. And so what you should do is seek out templates whether um, you're doing uh, you know, some sort of written um, content or if you're going to be doing um, a video, seek out some templates to make it very, very clear to the IRB that your participants are only going to see one of the following randomly assigned four cells and um, that they can see what's different in each of the four cells, that they can see um, what you've manipulated and how you've manipulated it. Um, so for an experiment, uh, you have to show your stimuli. Um, for an experiment, you also have to show your pretest or post-test or, or both if you're doing both. Um, and with that, they want to see all of the questions that you are asking of your participants um, in the experiment so that they, and they also want to see how you're asking them. So if it's a, a five point Likert scale, then you want to say this is a five point Likert scale and here are the 10 questions on the five point Likert scale and this is how it's worded. Um, so make sure that you have completely moved through all of the different concepts and the ways that the theory is investigated um, before you get to this process so that you know what your instrument is going to entail. Um, and then for an experiment, uh, you may have a debrief statement and the IRB is going to want to see that debrief statement where you where you tell the participants what really happened. Um, maybe if there was some deception or some other information that you want to share as a part of the debrief. Um, that goes in your IRB package. Um, so then kind of rewinding and going to a survey, if you're going to do a survey, you still have the uh, recruitment script, you still have the consent form, and then you jump straight to the instrument. So again, with the instrument, you want to make sure that you are telling the IRB the way in which you're asking the questions. This is a five-point Likert scale and the exact questions that you're asking. You have all of the items out there. Um, it's important to note for any instrument that you work through the IRB that um, if you want to add questions later to your instrument, you can do that, but you have to go back and get IRB approval. So it is better to think through every possible question that you might want to ask in your study and put it in your IRB protocol um, rather than to go back later and to have to take the time of getting your protocol reviewed, an already approved protocol of reviewed again and then reapproved with those changes. So you, you can't even as, add as much as gender. Um, without going back through the IRB process. And so please make sure that when you're doing um, your surveys or your pretests and your post-tests um, that you're thinking through every possible question that you want to ask. Um, also, as you're putting together those instruments for the experiments as well as the surveys, um, you want to remember that you're going to be using tried and true scales, that you can't simply create a way to um, measure complex constructs like credibility or relationship or um, whatever it may be that it is that you're looking at in your study. And so you want to find scales that have um, measured those previously. Um, so uh, for a survey, you're going to have that recruitment script, you're going to have the consent form, and then you're going to have your full instrument survey on there. Um, you don't have stimuli uh, because it's not an experiment. And because it's also not an experiment, you don't have a debrief statement. For a, for a survey. Um, and uh, if you're going to do an interview or a focus group, 
you're going to have your recruitment script backing up again. You're going to have your recruitment script. Yes, you're going to have your consent form. Yes, they're probably going to need to sign the consent form in an interview or a focus group. And you're probably going to want to have a little section on there that specifically says that this information is being recorded and that they check the box, that they understand it's being recorded and they're okay with it being recorded, etc. Um, and then uh, you're going to have to have the questions that you intend to ask um, your facilitation guide. Um, you also want to have a debrief statement for an interview or a focus group if that is your method. Um, so I have found that the way in which you put together the materials for your IRB package matters. If you just jumble it all together and you make it, you make someone make sense of this hot mess of a nasty looking Word document, then it's going to take a long time for the IRB to go through that and to make sure that um, what it is that you're proposing is ethical and um, a good approach to research. So please make sure that you really think through how can I clearly communicate what I want to do with the IRB. You don't try to hide anything from the IRB and that you know before you can ever even talk to a human about your research subject uh, or about your research um, topic to, to get them to participate in your study, you have to get IRB approval. If you collect data without IRB approval, you're not allowed to use that data. So you have to make sure that you have your IRB approval um, for your data. Um, when you do your IRB submission, then you're going to arrange all of these different items and you're going to also include your city certificates and you're going to go through and fill out the IRB application itself. Now the IRB application um, tends to take a little bit longer to go through than just, you know, filling out short answers. The IRB application is going to um, evolve over time. In general, they want to know about um, the sort of like a a mini lit review on your study. Uh, what is the justification and the purpose of your study? They're going to want to know about um, in detail the research subjects that you're talking to, who these people are, why those are the right people, how you're going to get access to them, those sorts of questions. They're going to want to know what it is that you're doing with them um, by way of an experiment or um, the questions that you're asking them. Um, they want to know the very specific scales listed out that you're using with them, with the people. They want to know how many people. Uh, they want to know if these people are in um, uh, compromised situations like they're prisoners or their um, children or they have health issues, um, like they're patients of some sort, etc. Um, so they really want to know um, who it is and how it is that you're going about collecting this data. And then um, what the IRB wants to do is to kind of put it back to you as the ethical trained researcher. What are you doing to um, identify the risks that the participant or the um, respondent might face um, as a, as a um, result of participating or responding to your research study? Um, so what are those risks and have you really thought through them and, and accurately um, and, and completely described what those risks are? Then what are you doing to mitigate those risks? And then the IRB wants to know about the benefits that your research study has for society. Um, every single person who's going to have um, his or her fingers in the data needs to be on the IRB application. Um, there should typically only be a, um, a PI, and then if that PI is a student, then it ha that person can only be a co-PI, and it has to be a co-PI um, primary investigator with a, with a professor. So if you're doing an IRB package with me as a part of a class, then you're going to elect one person in your team to be a co-PI, that's the IRB point person. Um, and then um, I am going to be listed as a co-primary investigator. That point person is going to be listed as a co-primary investigator. And then all the other people are just going to be general investigators, all the other people in the team. And then you have to submit IRB city training um, certificates for every single person who is on that team. So you have to 
um, be open and honest with the IRB about who's going to have access to this data and how. Um, and of course, the IRB also wants to know um, what level of privacy you're giving the participants or the respondents in your study and how it is that you're ensuring that level of privacy. Um, so as you go through and you create your IRB package, um, if you're doing this for me, you're going to want to use um, any of the guides that I've given in a course pack or that I might have put up on Blackboard um, so that it is clearly laid out and it can very quickly move through um, what it is that is being talked about. Um, I will give you guides for the IRB application. I will give you guides for um, the recruitment script, for the consent form, which will be directly from the IRB, um, and um, also for how I'd want you to format your stimuli. Um, when it comes to your instrument, whether it's an experiment with a pretest or a post-test or both, or it's a survey just with a questionnaire, when it comes to your instrument, I want you to label in there, these are the demographic questions. Um, these are the um, broom roll questions. Um, these are the um, uh, Sweetser and Kelleher relationship questions. Like I want you to give the source and uh, the label of, of what that particular scale is so that it's an easy check, check, check. I can account for everything. I understand what's being asked and, and how it relates to the study and it's good to go. Um, and then of course, make sure that you ask every single question that you think you need to ask in there. Um, so really think through the demographics uh, as well when you're putting together your IRB application so that you don't have to go back and say, oh crap, we forgot to ask for gender. And now we've got to go back and ask for gender. So um, if you're doing an IRB package for a military service, it gets a little bit more complicated because not only do you have to get your IRB approved by the institution, SDSU, but you have to then get your IRB approved by the Marine Corps or the Navy IRB. Um, and if that's the case, you're gonna have to do a couple of extra modules in the city um, IRB training, and you're going to have to do um, their package of paperwork, um, some of which you have to have your military ID card in the computer in order to access the systems and to digitally sign, and all of which has to be um, endorsed by a flag officer, um, general officer. So if your team is going to be doing a study for me in one of my classes where you want to use a military population um, as respondents or as participants, then you need to um, start that conversation with me early so that we can start tracking all of the extra requirements that you're going to have. They're totally feasible in the amount of time that you're going to want to get this done, but it's something that you have to track early and it just means a couple more hoops um, that you have to jump through in order to get your study fully approved. But when, when it's approved, it's approved and the data is high, high quality. So um, it's definitely uh, the juice is worth the squeeze on it if that happens to be the right population for you. Um, so that's how you uh, bring together the documents um, that you would put in an IRB protocol and uh, should give you a little bit more information about getting your IRB packages ready. When you have all that information together and you have all of your samples that you're um, using for writing um, out the different responses in the IRB application in the online system, then you're ready to, to start putting it all into the system and uploading it. And then you go through the back and forth with the IRB as they have small changes for you. Um, and then your study is approved and you can start to collect data. So um, happy IRB and uh, good luck with your research.